Hey, how's it going everyone? Just back in with another lesson focused on Ezekiel 13 and um, false prophets. And then um, more importantly, I would say possibly even than the text itself is um, Ezekiel 14.9, you know, and who's behind it. And, um, you know, that's um, what we know now, you know, in these days. And I think this is just more and more evidence for people to buckle up, you know, all of us for something big, you know, that's uh, about to be revealed in the sky because these things are obvious to us, you know, and then this is um, all God's doing, you know, revealing these things to us, who the characters are and what their role is and that kind of thing. So just know that. Keep this in the back of your mind. Matthew 24, 24, for that, there shall arise false Christ and false prophets. Okay, so if you're presenting a false Christ, that's a false prophet, okay, because Christ is coming in the volume of the book, you know, and then the entire Bible is breathing prophecy. And so a false Christ, if you say things that are inconsistent with the Bible, then that's false prophecy. And then anybody who is prophesying falsely, there are going to be aspects of Christ that they don't know, you know, or like that they're going to teach that are incorrect. And so many of the Hebrew Israelites, for example, are false prophets. And then we know the, re you know, another thing about Christ that they teach that's also false is that he was born a man and woman. And so you'll always have both, you know, like a false Christ will not be able to tell you when he's going to return. And so he's, you know, he's going to let that person down in terms of prophecy. And then if you're making false predictions, then you're also going to have other aspects of Christ, you know, that are false, you know, and evil. And um, that's just one example, you know, teaching the, uh, the non-virgin birth, for example. So they're one-to-one, -one, you know, is what I'm trying to say. And, um, and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And so false prophecy is also obviously in the mainstream. You know, people who are talking about, you know, we're going to like get, you know, emissions down to this number by 2030. And like, they, they don't know that 2030 is going to exist and all that kind of stuff. So um, they're making up all these numbers, you know, by 2050 and all that. How can you have a system like this purely from a financial perspective continue on until 2030? <laughs> okay, like it's like uh, it's limping along at best right now. And America is one of the countries that are better off than the others worldwide. And we're barely keeping it together. So, you know, that's absurd. So I think the mainstream false prophets are like they're ridiculous, like atheists are not even falling for it. But, you know, those with Bible in hand, it's a little bit more subtle, I would say. But even that, it's kind of ridiculous at this point. So, you know, just be aware of that, that, um, you know, their, the objective of these false Christ and false prophets is to be close to, but not quite able to deceive the very elect. Okay. And so just know that. And um, we're going to find out here who's behind all this. And we know that too. And so that's, again, one of the many, many reasons why you know, we're, we're living in the last days, you know, because these deceptions are being undone by God to his elect, you know, and so this is amazing. And we know it now, it could not be more obvious. So that's one of the many reasons why I know that um, Christ's return is imminent. Um, Ezekiel 13, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who are prophesying and say to those who prophesy from their own hearts, hear the word of the Lord. So heart, you can Think of also in the Bible as your mind, you know, if you look up that word, okay? And so they're just making up stuff, you know, and then we'll see who's behind it in Ezekiel 14, 9. Um, verse 3, thus says the Lord God, woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing, okay? Your prophets have been like jackals among ruins, O Israel. You have not gone up into the breaches or built up a wall for the house of Israel that it might stand in the day of battle. They have seen false visions and lying divination. So... They're not doing anything to help people. That's what a false prophet will do. Because like it's using an analogy here about built up a wall is to like be able to see more clearly, you know, like what's going to happen and what's going on out there and stuff. So that's why a prophet is very, very valuable, you know, because um, they're going to speak what God says and then they're going to give some amount of clarity, you know, as to what's coming and then identify who the enemies are because there'll be people that will be against what God said. Okay, so just know that. Uh, they have seen false visions and lying divinations. They say, declares the Lord when the Lord has not sent them, and yet they expect him to fulfill their word. So these people that are barking on the streets, all these people, Ken Hoban, Pastor Anderson, the Hebrews, everybody, um, they're expecting God to come and fulfill their words. <laughs> okay, so like, God's like, what are you talking about? Like, just talking complete nonsense. 
And, um, you know, God's going to explain here what he's going to do to those people. Uh, have you not seen a false vision and uttered a lying divination? Whenever you have said, declares the Lord, although I have not spoken. Okay, so I just, again, I highly recommend people don't come here and like, um, you know, just uh, glorifying your ignorance, okay? Like, if you don't know, just don't say anything. You know, it's totally fine. Like, you don't have to like chime in and add nonsense. You know, Christ is going to return in 10 years, 15 years, or whatever, even five years, or even anything, you know, like... Um, Again, unless you're ready to put your life behind it and you're confident that God told you that and then put your videos up so we can evaluate not just what you're saying, but you as a person. OK, so this is just a fair warning. So don't do that, you know, because we're going to see what happens to those people. And I don't want that for people if they're genuine. So you're not getting any points. <laughs> OK, for just making up stuff. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have uttered falsehood and seen lying visions. Therefore, behold, I am against you, declares the Lord God. You do not want the God of the Bible against you, okay? Nobody wants that. I don't. <laughs> I Not at all, okay? And so you do not want that. My hand will be against the prophets who see false visions and who give lying divinations. If you look up this word, uh, divinations. The practice of seeking knowledge of the future or the unknown by supernatural means, okay? And so that's, um, it's scary, okay? Because we all have the ability to potentially mislead people. You know, and God does not handle that well, okay? He doesn't like any of that, okay? Certainly if there's money involved too, it's even worse. So don't do it, okay? Just say you don't know and just shut up. Um, they shall not be in the council of my people, nor be enrolled in the register of the house of Israel, nor shall they enter the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord God, okay? So you just, the door slammed shut for these people, okay? Precisely because they have misled my people saying peace when there is no peace, and because the people build a wall, these prophets smear it with whitewash. So anytime you try and build it up, you know, to see clearly, they come and just destroy it, okay? And so all you people that come by here and just talk nonsense, you know, and I'm trying to, like, metaphorically build this wall so people can see, you know, what's about to happen. And you come here and say, oh, no, no, just push that wall out 10 years, 15 years, 1,000 years and all that. You guys are a part of this group, you know? And so I'm just, if you're genuine, don't do it anymore, okay? Just don't type anything. Say to those who smear it with whitewash that it shall fall. There will be a deluge of rain and you, O oh great hailstones, will fall and a stormy wind break out. Okay, so God's not going to deal with those people well, including me if I'm uh, prophesying falsely. And when the, wind when the wall falls, will it not be said to you, where is the coating which with you smeared it? Okay, so like God's sarcastic. He's like, he doesn't care about these people and we'll see that he's actually behind it. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I'll make a stormy wind break out in my wrath. And there shall be a deluge of rain in my anger and great hailstones in wrath to make a full end, okay? And I will break down the wall that you have smeared with whitewash and break it down to the ground so that its foundation will be laid bare. When it falls, you shall perish in the midst of it and you shall know that I am the Lord. And that's in verse 14. That's destruction with God's elect. Thus will I spend my wrath upon the wall and upon those who have smeared it with whitewash. And I will say to you, the wall is no more, nor those who smeared it. Okay, the prophets of Israel who prophesied concerning Jerusalem and saw visions of peace of her for her when there was no peace, declares the Lord. So it's in verse 16. This is referencing the plagues in Revelation 16. So anybody who's saying, no, no, no we're good. Everything's going to be fine and all that kind of stuff. You, you better know what you're talking about. Okay, you better be getting that from God or I would highly recommend just shutting up. Um, okay, there is the Bible is not speaking of peace to a place called Mystery Babylon if it's America, okay? That's not what it's in the plans for. That's not what's in the cards, so to speak, okay? That's not what's written. What's written for it is absolute destruction where nobody can even live here anymore. Just like bird food, okay? And so just know that. And if that's not what you think the Bible's saying, then go somewhere else, okay? Because that's what I believe, you know, very, very strongly. It's more and more obvious every single day. And if you don't want that to happen, you should also leave, okay? So just know that. And you, son of man, set your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own hearts, okay? Prophesy against them and say, thus says the Lord God, woe to the women who sew magic bands upon all wrists and make veils for their heads of, of persons of every stature in the hunt for souls. Will you hunt down souls belonging to my people and keep your own souls alive? Question mark. It's rhetorical. And so God's like, you're going to pay for this. And that's in verse 18, 666, okay? So all these people are chasing other souls, trying to get them to be a part of their lives. And then God's like, will you hunt down souls belonging to my people and keep your own souls alive? Like, how are you going to survive when God comes with his wrath in 666? 
You have profaned me among my people for, hand, for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread, putting to death souls who should not die and keeping alive souls who should not live. Okay. So anybody who lies, they'll co-sign them. You know, people wearing this, selling it and all that kind of stuff and making the gospel into a business. You think they're going to get away with it? Just because they teach some truths, just because you're a flat earther or whatever the hell you think you are, uh, just because you go out to the beach and, you know, talk to people and all that, you hand out dearth cards, you think you're a, God's cool with you? Absolutely not, okay? Um, these people are um, actors, okay? And we're going to find out who's behind them in uh, Ezekiel 14.9. Uh, by your lying to my people who listen to lies, okay? And so these liars, these half-truthers can go out and then attract potentially other half-truthers. That's all they're able to, you know, bring to them okay just know that therefore thus says the lord god behold i am against your magic bands with which you hunt the souls like birds and i will tear them from your arms and i'll let the souls whom you hunt go free the souls like birds okay your veils also i will tear off and deliver my people out of your hand and they shall be no more in your hand as prey and you shall know that i am the lord so i'm asking for salvation from the truthers from the quote, truth community. I want salvation. I need salvation from not just the government, which is very, very clear, okay? A group of us, we need salvation from the Hebrew Israelites, from the 501c3 church, from the flat earthers, from the simulation theory, from the Mandela effectors, from all these dummies, okay? We need salvation from that group. And that's what Christ is telling us here. All these false prophets and all that, um, they're hunting people down, okay? They're trying to create more and more disciples of their lies, okay? To push their lies more and more. That's their objective, is to expand Satan's kingdom fundamentally. And so just know that. Like it says here, uh, they shall be no more in your hand as prey, okay? And so they're predators, you know, just know that. All these actors. Because you have disheartened the righteous falsely, although I have not grieved him and you have encouraged the wicked that he should not turn from his evil way to save his life. Okay, so anybody who's truly been impacted by the God of the Bible, uh, they will turn from their evil ways, okay? And then they will come out of from my people, you know? And so just know that that'll be one of the many, many um, ways to identify a person. They're not gonna go into the world more, start an app, <laughs> you know, start selling things, you know, and start making a business and all that kind of stuff. They're going to turn from all that evil and go the opposite direction, come out of her, my people. And then you'll get to be that person's a good, good candidate for avoiding this destruction. OK, therefore, you shall no more see false visions nor practice divination. I will deliver my people out of your hand and you shall know that I am Lord. That's in verse 23, 33 is a number that oftentimes represents um, rulership, you know, and leadership on this earth. So I have Edgewise who's going in all this gibberish nonsense on my comment board. And I'll leave it there because it doesn't matter really at this point. But I'm trying to tell him that 33 in the Bible represents leadership, you know, and then a time of evil, you know, of evil leadership in the last days. And then all the, you people just come by my channel and just type a bunch of nonsense and nothing to do with the Bible. No, like, hey, in this verse, this, this, this or none of that. You guys are just magicians. OK, so like, it's, it's, just stop typing stupid stuff on my comment board. And then what I what I said was with the Bible in mind about the number 33, okay? When I tell you 22 represents the earth, I didn't just make that up. I didn't go to like astrology.com, okay? That's in the Bible and I post a video on it, okay? And then 22 and 33 represents rulership, you know, on the earth. And then an evil one, the earth is given to the hand of the wicked, Job 9, 24, adds at the 33, not by coincidence. And that represents the time that we live now and that's a time of salvation. And so 33, like it says here, is oftentimes, whenever Christ talks about when he's going to return and deliver his people, it has 33, you know, or 18 or 666 or something like that in it. And so 44 represents the elect, 55 represents people who understand the earth, the flat earth and the leader. So you add those together, that's 55 is an important number in the Bible, okay? And then 66 lacks, lacks the spirit and 77 is a complete number, which also represents the elect and that kind of thing. So, and Christ, you know, and, and his spirit and all that. So um just know that okay so like don't people we're so late in the game i have no idea why people just they're basically copying and pasting google and then just dumping it on my channel and I'm just trying to save you guys from being stupid you know like there are plenty of other channels if you want to just be a retard you know go and share your ideas over there this channel is for like scholarly people about the bible okay you know if you if you haven't noticed a majority of my um videos are either just the mainstream telling us the Bible is coming true or like a study from the Bible. OK, it's not just like random stuff. OK, like it's just it's completely ridiculous. The kind of things that people um, come here and it's like 
this YouTube channel is my quote virtual home. Okay, you can't just come here and just make up stuff, <laughs> you know, and just tackle like a thing on the wall and just think that I'm gonna leave it here when you leave. Okay, I'm gonna d destroy it and I'm gonna make fun of you on your way out. Okay, because you people are stupid. So if you haven't figured it out at this point, this channel is about the Bible itself. Okay, so just know that. And then that's the one luxury I have as a quote unquote prophet is that everything that I teach is directly from the Bible. I've just been able to put them in order because of what God told me. And so that's why I'm not afraid of this, Ezekiel 13 at all, you know, with, with, with my position that I'm in, because it's simply like taking the tiles and putting them in the right order. I didn't add anything, okay? And then God put the links together, that Acts 1, 10 and 11, which is the biggest clue that I suspect, you know, only a small group of people know is Revelation 11, you know, are the two witnesses. And so that is a big clue that unlocks the, the end times, you know, the book of Revelation. And so without that, the Bible won't make sense. You know, you won't understand Revelation 11 in the very least and um, Revelation 16. And so uh, I am I fear none of this, okay? Because I know that if what I was told, I didn't come up with it, okay? God must have told me that. And it's just simply taking what he's already written and then piecing it together, you know, and then putting it in the right sequence. And then, like I've said many times, I see that sequence everywhere. I even see that some aspect of that sequence here in this, and this is not even related to that kind of thing, you know, like, um, but it's ultimately talking about a time of evil, you know, and deception. And then it talks, it talks about wrath. Okay. So it has an element of the sequence built in here. Okay. And it's, it's everywhere. Okay. And so Matthew 24, 24, talks about false Christ and false prophets rising up, trying to impress people and, you know, with their numbers and all the stuff that they're talking, and then they will deceive the very elect. And then the Bible says that the end times are cut short for the elect's sake. And so this, this supports that sequence as well. Matthew 20, 24, 24, 24 supports the sequence. And then so does Ezekiel 13, because these false prophets will not work. And then this is why they're not going to work because of Ezekiel 14, 9. And if the prophet is deceived and speaks a word, I, the Lord have deceived the prophet. And I will stretch out my hand against him and I will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. So God is behind it, okay? And so God is doing this and he's telling us that he's behind it, okay? So I know that the majority of people are just actors and you're not allowed to read what's in the Bible. You're allowed to quote everything and dance around everything else. You know, like I'll say the two witnesses are these two people and they support it everywhere in the Bible. And you're like, oh, I don't, what, what if it's Enoch? <laughs> just, you'll just make up stuff. Like you, you just have nothing else to say that's actually in the Bible. And so a majority of you people are just here to confuse the issue. And I'm aware of that. And then we're told here that God's behind it. Okay, so we know that. And we get further evidence of that here. In Job 12, 16, with him is strength and wisdom, the deceived and the deceiver are his. Okay, so God is behind the deception. You know, and he tells us that. And so uh, if he's telling me that, and the deceptions are so ridiculous in the times that we live in now, then we know that Christ's return is imminent because... All these people, a majority of the people even that come by my channel, I know that you're just actors, you know? And then I would say, what I can basically assess of you is how good your acting is, you know, at this point. Some of the better actors, I would say, are people like Right the Hand, because he actually occasionally says things that are very intelligent. The horrible actors are like people like, um, you know, Good Servant, you know, and that kind of, and End Times Teacher and all that, because, and Tahar and all these people, because they're just gro disgusting people, okay? Like the, the better actor, another good actor is like Ken Holden, you know, and Pastor Anderson, because like they live somewhat okay. And even Zabak of um, House of Israel is a decent actor because like a lot of his, you know, um, the way he lives his life is kind of hidden, you know, he's better at kind of keeping that separate, you know, but even some of that has come out, you know, the woodwork. But, um, you know, he's, he's better, you know, of them, but we know that they're all actors. Okay, because like God tells us that he's behind it. And so we just come out now, you know, and that kind of thing. And so I would just highly recommend for people if if you're not doing that purposely or whatever, just especially here and in just definitely in your own life, like root yourself in what the Bible says. Okay, not what Google says or like what you think or what you want or what you hope and all that kind of stuff. Like I read in Ezekiel 13, those are things out of your own heart, your own spirit. And God does not give a flip. I don't know if people are maybe new to some of this, some of this teaching, but I'm certainly aware, very aware of it now. God does not give a flip about man's opinion at all. And I don't want anybody out there who is actually genuine to find this out the hard way. Okay, he does not care. And like it says here, 
um, I am against you, declares the Lord God. And so the Bible of Christ says that you're either for him or against him. There's only two options. And I've noticed a majority of people are against my God. And so that it's because God has made you against him. You know, like I just read in Ezekiel 49, but the few people that have a functioning brain cell, okay, why not actually read what the Bible says instead of making things up? What's God going to, he's going to be like, oh, you didn't have time. Okay, well, you, you know, you'd rather make up your own stuff, your own numerology and like your own ideas and all that. Does it, does it sound anywhere in anything that I teach, certainly recently, that God cares about that? You know, and he's going to be kind of like, oh, no, no big deal, no, no problem. You know, yeah, you deceive yourself and, you know, a bunch of other people and all that. And so I'm just trying to help people, okay? Don't come here with your stupid ideas and all that kind of stuff, okay? Why don't you come here and then, you know, declare what God actually said. And if God didn't say anything to you, then shut up. It's okay. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.